Hi and welcome to our webinar about the International Master's Program in Comparative Social Research here at the Higher School of Economics uh, in Moscow. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Christian Fröhlich. I'm the academic supervisor of the program. I am an assistant professor at the department or the school for sociology here at the Higher School of Economics. I'm here since 2015 uh, after I obtained my PhD in Germany. I'm a German professor. Um, and yeah, and uh, I'm very happy here at the HSE uh, and especially with that wonderful international program I'm going to tell you about. Um, but first of all, uh, let us engage a little bit uh, with the title of the program. Yeah? It might seem a little bit uh, unusual for you because it does not really um, address a certain issue yeah, in sociology. But we are, we are having a program about comparative social research, which also indicates that it is a little bit beyond the scope of, of sociology itself as a discipline, although here um, it is situated at a school for sociology and our students get a degree in sociology. Yeah, comparative, comparison. Uh, we have uh, our approach here kind of is, is uh, rests on maybe two. Um, um, uh, one or two of the most uh, prominent uh, social scientists, uh, or I would say, yeah, you, and you might have even heard about them already. Uh, at least I hope you have heard about the uh, gentleman here on the um, on the right hand, uh, Emil Durkheim. Yeah, this was the first sociologist. Actually, he got the first uh, university position as a professor of sociology in the world, um, and uh, for him, for him. Uh, Sociology, um, yeah, was was an instrument to to, ex, uh, to explain something in the world, and uh, the, the the method to actually gain valid knowledge about uh, the inner workings of social reality uh, was comparison for him. Um, so only by comparing, the sociologists actually can gain uh, valid knowledge um, about social processes and the things uh, which rule the social reality in his. In his, in his approach, and this goes way beyond uh, pure description, of course. So, and uh, that line of thought was, of course, developed in many, many different directions since the uh, late 19th century. And one of the prominent, uh, most prominent, and he recently uh, was crowned the most scientist uh, cited politi political scientist in the world, Ronald Engelhardt. Um, he is actually he is an, uh, a fellow here at the High School of Economics. He is the leading researcher of an um, international laboratory for comparative social research, uh, also at our Faculty for Social Sciences. Um, and um, he, he developed a um, well-known and well-used uh, international survey, the World Value Survey. Uh, and uh, this is the main instrument to, to compare values and attitudes uh, in countries throughout the world. And uh, for him as well, as you see in the quote from him, um, comparison yeah, is something uh, to, to, um, to access how societies evolve. Um, and this is important in order to actually uh, kind of check, do policies, do things we do with societies and um, actually work? Um, do they develop to the better um, because we we do something with politics, uh, or do they develop to the worst uh, because we don't do anything about certain issues in society, certain problems, and so on? Um, how, about how, how is this has something to do with, uh, with the, uh, the mindset of people and how people relate to certain things in social reality, and so on? Um, so those are the two uh, cornerstones of our uh, program, I would say. And Unfortunately, we can we cannot invite Emil Durkheim anymore uh, to our to our courses. But uh, Ronald Engelhardt uh, gives frequently guest lectures uh, for our students. It's just like a little um, you know, uh, uh, taste of our program. But um, by invest by comparing, we don't mean just investigating. Uh, differences between countries and nations, so the biggest units of social reality, but we uh, co we see comparison as an instrument to gain knowledge about uh, smaller social entities, as social, political groups, religious, denominations, ethnic groups, men and women, yeah, when you break it down, different uh, educational uh, uh, categories, for example, people with different educational backgrounds, uh, and so on and so on. So the scope of comparing is, is uh, the broadest possible for our students as well. And just to give a little hint, 
a little uh, written some examples here how we do this in the program, how this is approached. Uh, I, I listed here um, um, six master thesis topics uh, by our students from from the recent years. How they so um, this, those are uh, master thesis uh, which uh, have been defended well and very successful. And you see here also the variety of um, the logical approaches we have in our program. Yeah, you see for example the first two. Um, Examples, they come, uh, they are about, about the topic um, of uh, gender differences. Yeah? And you see the first pro, first math thesis was about an international comparison of gender differences on the labor market um, using uh, the word value survey, for example. Yeah? Um, <clears throat> but the second uh, topic here was a qualitative uh, study, um, an interview study about career paths of women in, women in science, um, where the student compared um, women in science and in, 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 in STEM um, disciplines uh, in Germany and Russia by, by um, uh, conducting interviews with them about their career aspirations and, and experiences in their career uh, uh, paths. So this were two uh, wonderful theses using comparison in their, in their thesis. And the second example here is about uh, academic, academic dishonesty, a very uh, popular topic among our students to, to research. And here again, the first uh, topic um, is um, from a master's thesis uh, using uh, quantitative um, methodology, statistics, big data sets. Uh, here, our colleagues at the High School of Economics have uh, gathered uh, um, from the regions in, of Russia. And uh, the student here compared the attitudes towards academic dishonesty among university students um, in different regions in Russia. Yeah? Uh, whereas the second topic here uh, is about uh, a comparative analysis of a dishonest academic behavior among English and Russian students, where the student uh, did uh, interviews in England and Russia among students about the approach to, um, to university studies. What does it mean actually for them to study, to be a student? And what role academic dishonesty, so plagiarism, plays in that? So, so also a wonderful study using interviewing um, uh, for for in, in a comparative research design. Yeah, and the third example um, um, in the field of migration studies, uh, also very. Um, uh, popular among our students. Um, here, the first thesis looked at the everyday typifications of ethnic groups. So this was also a quantitative study, um, um, doing a survey, a full survey of internet of uh, uh, several disciplines at a regional university in Russia, looking at how uh, the different um, nationalities among the students view each other. Yeah, what kind of um, um, judgments and, and prejudices they have uh, towards each other. And the second here study in that field uh, looked at religious identity uh, among Lebanese who stayed at home and uh, migrated to Moscow. So a compa an intergroup comparison, as you, uh, uh, yeah, if you will, um, also using interviewing uh, for comparing two social groups here, those with and those without migration uh, experience and what does it do to, uh, to their religious identity. So these are just two, uh, three examples, or actually six, um, from the wide scope of our uh, um, students' research works. Um, and uh, yeah, they are always very interesting and they can all come always from original empirical work is one of the um, yeah, the must-dos in our program that our students have to do their own empirical study as an um, so master thesis, but these are only the last or the yeah the, the biggest uh, empirical study they actually do. Before that, um, they do uh, they engage in many different forms in empirical research at our university, or even not only at our university, but doing a research internship uh, in Russia or abroad. But I come to that in a, um, a couple of moments. Um, here, just to give you a little overview about the main characteristics of our program, it's a usual two years master program, uh, but we are quite small in comparison to other sociological programs uh, um, here at the higher school. Um, so usually our student group every year is comprised or comprised of 15 um, students uh, from Russia who get a state uh, scholarship, and um, yeah, so just. Um, uh, the result of a competition for those 15 
um, budget places um, and we can offer five um, five to six, it depends, but at least five um, scholarship places for foreign students. Um, um, here the deadline for application is the 1st of April, for Russian scholarship applications is the deadline uh, July 31st uh, every year. Uh, and then of course we have uh, a couple of places uh, for um, students who are willing to uh, pay uh, um, tuition fees in our program, which are the um, tuition fees in our program are uh, at the lowest end of the spectrum at HSE. So it's um, usually uh, the fees are much higher for other for uh, for other programs. Um, what is uh, specific and what is uh, um, particular pleasurable, I would say, also from my point of view. Um, is that we, um, our program can offer two um, double degree tracks to our students. I will come to that in more, in more detail uh, in a moment. Um, that means that our students have to check, our students of our program, this is not in faculty-wide competition, but only in a program internal competition uh, for places in two double degree tracks um, to the university uh, um, or to the Freie University, Free University of Berlin or to the uh, School for Advanced Studies in Social Sciences in Paris. Um, yeah, and then also a specific, uh, is an, an important feature of our program, although you have research internship uh, requirement in every master program nowadays, but our program uh, demands from our students that they do a research-related internship, where they already uh, develop their master thesis, yeah, uh, partly. And uh, our students from the first semester onward, again, uh, gain experience uh, with uh, research projects by engaging into them uh, with our teaching faculty. Yeah? So all our teachers are not just teachers, but they are foremost international uh, scholars and doing research on all kinds of uh, um, logical problem, yeah, topics. And uh, our students are um, they have the chance to engage, and they actually they have to. They are <laughs> required to uh, choose one or two or more uh, projects they engage um, um, with uh, over a certain amount of time during the first year of study. Uh, to, um, instruction is fully in English in our program, uh, not just instruction, but also all administrative procedures are uh, conducted in, in English. Our uh, program manager speaks uh, fluent English and uh, most of our documentation is in English, so you don't need to uh, know any Russian um, to come and study with us. Um, and our, yeah, and, uh, at least 50%, I would say, right now, of our teaching staff is from abroad. Yeah? Uh, and the other half of uh, so the, our Russian colleagues, they also speak fluently uh, English. You know? And what I'm also very proud of, our program provides and offers uh, f continuously uh, and many uh, guest lectures and workshops throughout the study year. We invite uh, colleagues from our broad network for the national uh, colleagues uh, to, to Moscow for, for a week or two or even longer. Um, and then they do a workshop or presentation for our students uh, in any case. So this is a wonderful opportunity here also to connect our students to our international colleagues for internship opportunities, for um, possibilities after uh, gaining the MA diploma, uh, for example, PhD. Uh, and so on, yeah, or other just research contacts uh, when you stay at HSE and do your PhD but have a contact outside where you then maybe go for, for a fellowship or so. Yeah? So this is, uh, um, we are always uh, trying to get our students into international networks throughout their two years they are with us. Um, yeah, here a little uh, look at the, um, look at the, uh, general structure for our program. It looks quite basic, actually, uh, except uh, when you uh, pay attention to the second year, um, there are no more, there's no more, no more teaching or studying in the second year. So uh, all um, studying and all teaching is done in the uh, first uh, year. That means quite dense and quite full. Um, and then uh, the second year is free. Uh, for you to do your own research and go abroad or do your internship uh, while going abroad or staying in Russia, uh, preparing, preparing your master's thesis, doing your field work for the master's thesis, and then in the second half of the second year, you 
you write a math thesis, yeah? um, or you, uh, this is also the time where you then um, have the chance to participate in one of our double degree tracks. Uh, but throughout the year, continuously, uh, several um, times a month, we offer uh, guest lectures and workshops for our invited uh, colleagues from abroad. Um, yeah, just uh, maybe quickly an answer to one of the questions here because it relates. Um, no, in the second year, there will, uh, there will be no uh, classes as such, um, only um, your internship uh, or um, and or actually internship is always uh, required and maybe in addition uh, going abroad um, doing your double degree or uh, just uh, participating in some other exchange program and writing your thesis. This is the, the, the second, uh, second year. Classes um, happen only in the first study year. Um, yeah, and here a little uh, glimpse at uh, the um, program curriculum, um, how it uh, probably will be. There's, there are always uh, some, some changes, but in general, we have those three uh, pillars. And uh, the first and most important pillar for us is uh, methods. Yeah? Um, so we proud ourselves to offer our students um, the, the broadest possible uh, variety of uh, classes in different methods. Uh, starting with uh, statistics, um, those are probably the, the biggest part, the biggest um, also requirement because more, most of our compulsory courses, students have to pass in order to get the diploma, are related to uh, quantitative um, research methods, to statistics. Yeah? And uh, students learn uh, the program language R, so we don't um, work with SPSS or Starter or something, but with uh, are so you have to not just uh, to learn um, the you know, statistical um, procedures and, and coefficients and so on, but um, also to to yeah to to program your analytical instruments. Uh, but in the end, it uh, it is worthwhile because of I can do a lot more, a lot better, and nicer. Uh, than with SPSS, for example. But this, um, so starting with uh, with an introduction into statistics, uh, but already on a quite uh, uh, user level, I would say, uh, and it goes on to uh, wonderful courses such as multi-level regression analysis and uh, structural equation modeling, where you can actually uh, do multi-level comparative analysis. Yeah? Uh, so this is. Um, a very important course for us in, this, in the fourth module, then in the end of the first year, you will be able to actually conduct structural equation models. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is wonderful. But we have uh, other courses as well, social network analysis, an introduction into big data uh, and using big data. It's a quite new course for us, but uh, very uh, popular. And also we try always to be yeah, um, close to the cutting edge uh, of, of, of uh, logical methods, and that's why we have also a course on qualitative comparative analysis, yeah, and uh, a new but upcoming uh, method here combining qualitative and quantitative uh, research instruments yeah, into one method. Uh, but uh, not to forget uh, ethnographic and qualitative methods as well. Uh, of course, they are a little bit underrepresented in our program, but still exist. So students, as I presented in the, in the beginning, uh, students use Quantitative and qualitative methods in their math thesis. You, so, you, so you don't have to use only quantitative methods, although the courses you will um, participate in are mostly on quantitative methods. Um, but you can still engage into qualitative research, and we have the lecturers and the supervisors for such uh, for such uh, theses as well here to to offer. Um, yeah, and the middle pillar here about theory is is what. what is uh, actually about yeah, uh, theoretical uh, approaches to certain real-world issues. Yeah? Um, of course, we have we <laughs> need to have at least one course on comparative sociology in the uh, in the program. Uh, I'm, I'm teaching that for a couple of years, uh, engaging with students into this, um, the concepts of comparative sociology and discussing them and trying to make sense of them. How we can actually apply this to to our research. 
But then we have a huge variety on, uh, of topics to offer so on gender, on aging, and public policy, and time, as you see in here, wonderful. Well, it's, uh, it's about the life course, yeah, also in, in different countries and so on, and how people, uh, what, what happens in, pe in people's lives at certain stages, and how this differs between countries. Um, but also about social inequality and migration and so on. So we have a huge variety. We also invite uh, courses from other. Um, departments, under other programs. We have guest uh, courses from um, international lecturers who come visit HSE, so we invite them sometimes to go to make a whole course uh, and so on. Yeah? And the research um, uh, preparation pillar here is, of course, also very important, but here we give, we, we engage into the general preparation and, and also kind of uh, mentoring of, of student uh, research work here yeah? in, at certain stages here. And, uh, during the first year, it's about designing our research, but also about meta knowledge about how to um, uh, write and, uh, and review uh, in, in a journal paper, uh, journal uh, article, and also to uh, present it in a, in a certain way in certain in, in different environments, yeah, academic, international academic conferences, workshops, and so on. But then also, of course, the research, in, research internship here and um, uh, your participation in other research projects, uh, which are led by our teaching faculty, is very important uh, preparation for you uh, to conduct your own research in time. Um, yeah, speaking, speaking about the internship, um, the internship uh, here, uh, for that we have reserved the whole um, uh, third semester, semester yeah? so, in, uh, so from September to December you have to do an internship uh, um, for a minimum of 10 weeks, but um, you know, often students do it, do it longer. Uh, you can stay at HSE, you can stay in Moscow, in Russia, or you go abroad, uh, and uh, there are um, Many, many opportunities uh, at HSE, of course, uh, with so many research institutes uh, and laboratories. There are many opportunities to engage in, in research environments for your internship. Also, Moscow has a lot of other um, research related uh, institutions uh, to offer, uh, especially for Russian speaking uh, students, of course, but also for our um, uh, foreign students have been engaging in the Russian Academy, Academy of Science, for example, and so on. And uh, or um, at least uh, this year, almost half of our students spend their third um, semester abroad. Uh, they do this um, uh, by participating in uh, an exchange uh, program. Uh, HSE is uh, such a good university. Uh, many other universities outside Russia want to cooperate and want to send their students here, and we want to send our students uh, there. So that uh, has an uh, HSE has a huge amount of cooperation agreements and especially when it comes to Rathnos Plus cooperation agreements where students then, where student exchange is possible uh, even with gaining a scholarship for that uh, for that time. Uh, and our uh, students happen to be very successful to gaining those, um, those uh, uh, places to other universities with a scholarship. Um, so all over, usually those are universities in, uh, in Europe, of course. Um, and uh, or you participate in one of our double degree tracks, I'll come to that uh, now in a moment, um, or you just do an internship, um, also abroad, for example, here our um, dear partner Tilburg University, so the, the, in particular the Department for Social and Behavioral Sciences, uh, our colleagues there are always happy to, to invite and welcome our students to do an internship at the European Value Study, uh, also like a so the European, yeah, not version, but it's a European, big European comparative across country survey. Um, who happens uh, every, they conduct it every, also every three or four years. Uh, the headquarter of a, a European value study is in a Tilburg University. So our students often engage in any kind of, uh, yeah, some kind of project related to that, those um, uh, uh, value studies um, about European societies. And um, yeah, a couple of years already we sent students there only for the for the internship, for example. Yeah, but also students do internships in big international organizations here, in, um, for example, in the OCD in Paris or uh, the uh, United Nations, for example. We had also that case, um, um, or here the, cent the Center for East European International Studies in Berlin, for example, also in. Uh, research center on, on Eastern Europe uh, is, uh, is very happy to receive our students for internships. 
Um, and uh, yeah, now coming to the WDU track. Uh, as a couple of words, we have two agreements here with the Freie University in Berlin uh, and with the uh, Center uh, for the uh, School for Advanced Studies in uh, Social Sciences in Paris. And um, here, the double degree in Berlin um, is related to the Institute for East European Studies. They have a big uh, master's program, and in that big master, there's an interdisciplinary master program with several disciplines involved. And here, the sociology track yeah, is our is our partner, led here by Professor Dr. Katharina Blum. Um, and uh, students are supposed to uh, to study uh, and earn 30 credits in the third semester at uh, Berlin University, and um, all other credits will be acknowledged by Berlin, and you write your master thesis in co-supervision with a colleague from uh, HSE and, and Berlin, um, and then you are eligible to gain also the German diploma. Same, uh, so here are a couple of topics you have to have to study courses in. Those are new dual names. It means the this is are not um, course names, uh, but just to give you an, an, yeah, an impression what um, scope of topics you are then, um, studying in Berlin. And uh, the same goes for for Paris. Here we uh, cooperate with the with Francois uh, Dossier from the. Uh, Seretzik, yeah, it's a, um, a, a research center on uh, yeah, the region of, of, of the post-Soviet uh, Russia, Caucasus, um, and uh, Central Asia. And here you also study certain courses um, and write your super super uh, write your uh, thesis and supervision co-supervision as well. Yeah, and with a French or uh, with a uh, Paris colleague uh, or and, uh, a colleague here from Moscow, and to uh, and to gain also the French diploma. Um, our main Russian partner here at HSE is the Laboratory for Comparative Social Research. I already um, mentioned that institution because Ronald Ingelhardt is here, head researcher, and this is a um, truly wonderful institution. Um, open to our students, um, and uh, they, this is um, you know was established 2010 with a big grant from the Russian uh, government to set up a truly the national high impact uh, research re research center, and uh, the Eduard Ponarin at the um, very uh, fringes here of the uh, photo uh, photograph is a professor from HSE in Saint Petersburg. In the middle, you see Christian Welzel, a German professor um, who works closely with uh, Ronald Ingelhardt. Ronald Ingelhardt here, um, uh, it's on the other uh, side. Um, they they lead those um, that uh, yeah, research center, which hosts more than uh, uh, hosts more than fifty international projects, um, um, of course, conducted by a wide. A network of international colleagues here who come um, time uh, time and time here to, to to HSE and also give workshops and guest lectures and so on. Um, HSE hosts, hosts um, their annual conference and several uh, workshops every year. There are international summer schools where our students go and participate on methodological issues or on topical issues, and uh, we have a lot of. Um, also, they have a seminar going on, a continuous seminar where you can participate and can just go and attend and see what's 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 up. Yeah, uh, state of the art in comparative uh, research, and of course, this presents a wonderful opportunity for our students to engage with international scholars, to get contacts uh, uh, for PhD opportunities and for internship opportunities, uh, for supervising opportunities, and so on. Yeah, course of co-authorship and so on. So this is a wonderful uh, institution, and uh, our method courses are mostly taught by colleagues from that international laboratory. I hear a little glimpse at uh, our um, main lecturers, I would say. Yeah, you see a quite young bunch of uh, of lecturers here. Um, it's also because the program is quite young and quite inno innovative. Um, yeah, we, we were founded only in 2014, so we are here uh, for five years or only. Um, 
and yeah, international uh, group of scholars here. Um, on the left, you have the Russian colleagues, and then Lily de Popo in the middle from France, uh, and the rest um, of our international faculty on the other side. Um, but they are not just all, yeah, they are maybe the core lecturers, but we have uh, others as well. Um, but uh, just to, to make the argument that we are quite a young, a young faculty. Um, uh, and here, uh, yeah, <laughs> and speaking of young and old, uh, those I just here um, present here the most in distinguished uh, colleagues uh, from abroad, which are here uh, um, periodically for workshops and guest lectures. Here, Hans Peter Kries on the left, Christian Wetz on the right, we the most uh, prominent here. Um, Hans Peter Schmidt is coming here, and this is the one with the, with the yellow tie. Um, uh, in the middle uh, is coming uh, next summer to give a, a whole two two weeks uh, workshop on structural equation modeling. So this is uh, this is exciting. Um, yo, so these are just uh, to give you a little, little glimpse. And um, Christian Metzler had some warm words for our program, and I can only uh, agree with him here that indeed our uh, program has um, kind of a a real spirit. Yeah? So everyone is, uh, is, is still, although already five years, but we are still excited to have that program. And we have always so, so motivated and uh, inspirational uh, students yeah? with whom we do projects and who inspire us with their ideas. Uh, that is indeed here. Um, and uh, uh, it creates real, a real spirit because our students are so dedicated. Yeah? So they push even us here to. Um, always kind of be on the latest uh, yeah, level here and um, and uh, and offer something for them. Yeah? Um, our international students um, yeah, uh, have a similar impression here. And I wanted just to draw attention here to um, that both, although they are different, both assessments, um, they mentioned the combination between theoretical and empirical parts. Yeah? So that, uh, all what we do, what we offer on a theoretical level, uh, is always to um, um, uh, kind of empower you to do good empirical research. Yeah? So this is uh, very important for us, and obviously students um, uh, kind of receive that, yeah, and, and, and feel it as well. Um, yeah, what, what, who are our graduates? Uh, of course, this is an important question. What do our students after? And graduating from our program. Um, those are typical examples here. Of course, the, the variety is much broader, but um, indeed, they, they present here certain pathways, maybe typical pathways of our students. Starting here with Kiris Makarovs, he, he did, for example, an internship at Tilburg University at the European Value Studies uh, uh, Research Group. Uh, wrote two papers in co-authorship uh, with colleagues from there um, for the national peer reviewed uh, journals, and then uh, got into uh, a highly acclaimed uh, PhD program in sociology at Essex University, uh, where he now is doing his his PhD in, in England. And uh, Miguel here, um, um, he did his um, internship at the UN. A mission uh, for Latin America in Chile uh, and stayed there. He got an offer right off his um, internship period. He got an offer to stay as an expert in the, in the, in the lists and, uh, and just um, yeah, continued to stay there. So he actually didn't come for his defense uh, of the master thesis, but we had that conversation and his, his presentation, everything uh, via Skype. Uh, so this was also kind of a what we want, we want to happen to our students, yeah, that the internship uh, leads to professional uh, engagement already. Uh, here, Saula um, is uh, is now, um, I guess, soon. I, I saw her, the, I saw her the other day, soon defending him, her PhD. Uh, she stayed at HSE uh, and engaged here into a graduate school and is now defending her PhD. The Institute for Education, highly acclaimed big uh, research institution for educational studies. And Yevgenia here, one of our more recent um, graduates, uh, is still engaged into a PhD program in political science and uh, works at the Laboratory for Comparative Social Research here. Yeah. 
Um, we, uh, yeah, I would say that uh, 30 to 40 percent of our students um, go on doing uh, uh, their PhD. Uh, it might be even a little bit more. Um, and uh, the other, like 50 to 60 percent, go on doing uh, analytical work yeah, outside the university. Uh, but always uh, doing uh, kind of research-related work. Yeah? For example, a, a good a graduate of ours for, of last of this year, last year uh, works now in a computer um, in a gaming um, game production company, um, but an analyzes user data yeah? in order to develop the um, the game systems better. So this is uh, also analytical work. So um, here a little bit. A little broader overview of what our students do. So they're, yeah, whether they are staying in Russia or staying uh, or going abroad, uh, or do, yeah, whether they stay in academia or uh, go to the go, go on, the, on the general job market. When they stay in academia in Russia, then and in Russia, then they most likely end up staying at HSE because HSE is just the best university in social science in Russia. Um, work in laboratories, institutes, uh, research centers, and doing their PhD. Uh, when they go abroad, uh, of course, they, they go on to uh, engage into PhD schools, graduate uh, schools. Um, right now, we have students in, you know, as I said, already, University of Essex and Uppsala University in Sweden and Bremen University in, in, in Germany and Helsinki uh, University in Finland, for example. Yeah. Uh, people doing their PhDs. When they stay in Russia on the job market, then often they uh, do market research or um, the work for consulting firms, uh, also analytical work, of course. Uh, on the international job market, they engage the national uh, non-governmental organizations, yeah, OECD, right? And so I brought an uh, example uh, by Miguel already. Uh, so, um, who do we? <laughs> Look for uh, um, what do we look for in, in, in applicants? Um, uh, of course, uh, applicants. Uh, all applicants do not always come from uh, from a sociological background. Uh, roughly 50% only have a sociology degree when they apply to us. The other 50% come from a wide, wide, wide range of. Uh, social sciences or even others. So we have political science, of course, we have um, economics, finance, um, we have uh, linguists, we have um, anthropologists, of course, um, historians, yeah, so those are psychology, of course. So you don't need to be a sociologist to apply to our program, but you should have a strong interest in uh, in studying the society. Yeah? Uh, that so you should show in your motivation letter uh, and also in your research statement uh, two of the core documents of, of a portfolio for applying to our program. Um, what are, are your ideas in, uh, of, of studying uh, society? Why is this interesting to you? Yeah? Uh, what future uh, research topics you could imagine for your studies in, in, in our program? Of course, um, most of our students, when they when they start out, they have an academic uh, career vision. They want to do a PhD or want to kind of do research-related work in their uh, further professional career, and you should show that also in your in your professional in your motivation letter. Um, yeah. So also, yeah. What 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 is so? Why is research work important for you, and what what experience do we have already? Yeah. Um, so what methods do you know? Uh, what research, research have you already done? What topics have you already studied? Yeah. All those all those things we want to know uh, in your in your motivation and in your research statement. Uh, and of course, uh, students in our program they should be open to the international environment. Yeah, we have a wide range from uh, our students, the national students come from a wide range of countries um, all over the world. Here are just some examples here on the slide. Um, so you should be a, uh, willing to engage yeah, with other students from other, um, uh, from other countries. Yeah? This, is, uh, this makes up wonderful class discuss discussions and I see them always together with our Russian uh, students uh, also outside the classroom. So you should have uh, a wish to do that, yeah? otherwise you may, might have um, um, yeah, not the best feelings in our program. 
Um, okay, here about the application. Um, as I mentioned before, we have different application deadlines. For Russian students, uh, the general application deadline is July 31st. Uh, um, whether you want to apply for scholarship or for a tuition fee uh, based um, uh, studies. But for foreign students, uh, they can apply until April 1st uh, if they want to gain a, a scholarship from the Russian state. Um, as I said, there are five to six places every year to offer, um, but decisions will be made only around April 1st. So we will, um, uh, with eligible candidates, we will do Skype interviews, uh, and then, but the, 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 yeah, the final decision will be made on our part um, at the beginning of April. Um, or you can apply until Ju uh, July 31st as well for tuition-based. Uh, as I said before, a motivation letter and research statement are core elements of our portfolio. Of course, a CV. Yeah, it should be an uh, expressive CV. So put all your experiences, also especially with academic research, uh, publications, conference, and so on. Put it on uh, on the CV. Of course, uh, we really like to have two recommendation letters um, uh, from for foreign for applicants. Of course, it should, should has to be in English. Um, for Russian applicants, we really uh, recommend you to send uh, English uh, recommendation letters. I know that m many Russian colleagues might not be so fluent in, in English and would prefer to write something in Russian. Um, um, so as an exception, it would be possible to send only one uh, English letter, but the other one in Russian, but not both in Russian. This is very important here. Yeah? And uh, yeah, and of course the transcripts of, pre of your previous uh, previous studies. Um, if you have an English certificate, uh, send it, but you don't need to do a test just for the application, uh, because in any way we will do an interview with uh, with eligible candidates on the short list um, in English. So then we will already access the level of English you have uh, for if this is okay for, for studying our program. But for more criteria of portfolio evaluation, please look um, uh, on the HCE application website. There you have a whole list of things we, 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 we grade during the, the application uh, review. Um, all right, if you have more questions, I will now answer uh, the questions in the chat. Um, if you have other questions uh, later on, please um, uh, look at our website, of course. For, <laughs> First and foremost, for information, or write uh, to me for any program content related questions or for any administrative questions, please uh, write to our program coordinator. You see the con contacts here on the slide. And now I um, try to answer your, your questions, quite a few here. Um, yeah, questions about scholarships for students, for, for, for foreign students, or uh, answered it already, of course. You can um, apply for, for a state scholarship uh, in our program until April, April 1st. Um, in, I don't, in, yeah, in relation to what, from what country we are coming, uh, HSE does um, uh, Olympics, uh, Olympic competition in, in, in some foreign countries, but mostly in the post Soviet world. So you might also be able to participate in one of the Olympics or the our programs Olympics in one of the non-Russian uh, cities. Uh, but you have to check the, the website for that. Um, but in any case, yeah, I forgot that to mention for Russian applicants, of course, the Olympics, uh, the HSE, not the, not, not, um, of course, there are two Olympics in Russia. Uh, the one Olympic, I am professional, yeah, yeah professional, uh, is a Russia-wide Olympic competition. When you uh, win there in the category of sociology, you can choose freely your master program to engage. Uh, and then, of course, you can enroll also in our program. Uh, but HSE does also conduct also its own uh, Olympics um, competition. And uh, so does our program. We are part of that um, competition. And um, every year, six to seven uh, winners of that competition um, get, a, get a scholarship place in our uh, in our program. So this is one of the best possibilities actually to um, to enroll into our program without having to write and or assemble a whole portfolio. Um, okay. Um, 
Uh, if there, yeah, the question about uh, the, the number of students who can go abroad in the second year. Um, no, also not from the pro from from not from the program uh, from our from our side, but of course there are limited number of places um, from the partner university side. So when it comes to the double degree um, tracks, um, at least five persons, five students in, into each directions can can go, into each direction can go. Um, uh, at least five. Um, it, it might be some more, depending on the incoming number of students yeah, from Paris or Berlin, but at least five. And uh, then, of course, on top of that, students can uh, go if they get a place uh, in the university or faculty-wide competition for other exchange programs at, uh, at the university, or you go just um, find an internship place outside Russia. Yeah? So this is uh, the rating, of course, when it comes to a double degree track and uh, Erasmus Plus exchange programs, uh, here the rating, of course, matters. Yeah? So your success as a student uh, matters very well. Um, uh, research work. I'm not really. Um, um, Bibi Nazir. I'm not really sure who uh, what you are referring to uh, because research work we do in many uh, frameworks when it comes to um, the engagement into uh, research activities uh, with um, the teaching faculty. This can this, this has has no starting date. You just um, agree with the with, with the project leader on when when you start. Yeah. So this is. Can be chosen freely whenever you start. Um, so uh, yes, um, uh, here's a question about the possibility to review Olympic tasks um, of the last years. Um, when you find our program at, on the page for the Olympic Olympics, you will see um, um, example tasks. Yeah? Uh, that how they look like, so you have a feeling and uh, example what what kind of task you will need. Um, uh, <laughs> a question about um, uh, Olympics and how they are an opportunity for a non-social scientist um, to engage uh, to enroll our program. Um, and specifically, specifically for someone with an engineering or math uh, background, um, um, yeah, I would say so. Um, because here, the, your diploma doesn't play a role; only how you answer the questions. Yeah, as you have to uh, for the Olympics, you have to um, develop two essays: yeah? develop a research proposal and uh, develop an analytical essay. So, um, yeah, no matter what, what. Um, uh, education background you have. If you if you win here, you get you get into the program anyway. Yeah. Okay, this, those are all questions I answered already. Um, if there are no more questions, uh, please write an email later. If some question come up, uh, please check our website. Uh, anyway. Um, All right, then, I would say uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you much for your questions and your interest in our program. And uh, yeah, all the best and hope to see your uh, applications.